Thank you, good evening. And so, uh, in the first sentence, this uh, development in Borough Green, Platt, Rutum, this, in my judgment, is the most serious development issue and the most environmentally damaging development that is taking place in any part of our Cumberland Morning constituency going from Eden Bridge to Waterbury. This is a really big number. <laughs> I'm just going to address three questions which may be helpful to you in the contributions you want to make from the floor. First, is this scheme going to be taken forward with a formal planning application? Second, if that happens, how is it going to be handled? And third, if it goes ahead, is there any prospect of it being approved? Let me try and have a go at each of those three. Is, the planning, is there going to be a formal planning application? Well, I have the benefit of the advice from the Tumbridge Morning Borough Council's uh, planning director, who of course are our planning authority here. And he has said to me in the correspondence I've been having with him that should the Kent International Gateway proposal be unsuccessful, I'm informed that a planning application for the Borough Green Pact scheme will then be made and that is assumed to be in the spring of 2010. So that is the position where we stand, but I entirely agree with what has been said earlier, that uh, if by any lamentable chance the key proposal should be approved through the normal planning process, then I hope and believe that that will kill the proposed development here stone dead. Um, that puts us in a somewhat ambivalent position <laughs> in relation to the key proposal, but the key proposal, um, we believe, just as this one here, is a thoroughly bad proposal and on planning and environmental merits also deserves to be turned down. So then I come to the second question, which is, if we get a formal planning application, how is it going to be dealt with? And here we are in a quite different position than our friends and colleagues up the road dealing with the KIG-1. <coughs> the KIG-1 is being dealt with under the planning procedures that we're all familiar with. It's gone to the local planning authority. There's now a public inquiry and the ultimate decision will be made by the Secretary of State. But as has already been referred to, a totally new planning regime is just about to befall us. And I say befall us very deliberately, and I feel deeply and passionately about this. Ever since we had a modern planning system with the 48 Planning Act, when for the first time in this country we moved from a planning system which previously you could go on developing anywhere you liked until somebody said no, as you know from the 48 Act, you can't develop unless somebody says yes. And those who say yes, and this is the critical point, are people who are democratically elected and therefore democratically accountable. And if you like their decisions, you can go on voting for them. And if you don't like their decisions, you can vote them out. What is, in my view, absolutely unacceptable in constitutional and democratic terms is that this government quango, which will actually, once the national policy statements are in place, have the right to determine the actual planning application. This is a body which is made up of people who are effectively bureaucrats, they are unelected, they are unaccountable, they are non-removable. 
And I believe that in issues such as planning, vitally affecting local communities, to strip away the centerpiece, which is democracy, is absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to be a bit gloomy, but um, it gets a bit worse. And it gets a bit worse because this body isn't going to deal with every single planning application. You'll be relieved to hear that. If you want to put an extension onto your house, um, then it'll, go to the, it'll still go to the Tunbridge and Morning Borough Council. But the threshold which has been laid down in the Government's Planning Act 2008, the threshold for the planning applications that are going to be dealt with not by your elected local planning authority, but by this new, unelected, unaccountable, irremovable quango, the threshold, I think, is ludicrously low, particularly, most particularly, in relation to rail freight interchanges. This body is only meant to deal with what are described in the Act as nationally significant infrastructure projects. So, what is the threshold, the test, as to whether a rail interchange is of national significance? You would think it would be a pretty high threshold. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it is a pathetically low one. A pathetically low one which will ensure that virtually every proposal for a rail freight interchange in this country is going to be taken out of the hands of the elected planning authority and put into the hands of the quango. And I'll tell you what the four criteria are, and you can judge for yourselves whether you think it's absurdly and unacceptably low or not. And these are they. It's got to be in England. Well, we can't escape that. <laughs> In size, it's, only got to be, it's got to be only above just 60 hectares, which is incredibly small for a rail freight interchange. It's got to have, this is ludicrous, it's got to have more than one cons consignor and go to more than one consignee. In other words, Mr. Bloggs and Mr. Smith it's got to be more than just Mr. Bloggs and Mr. Smith sending a piece of freight to each other. Well, you know, how low can you get? And the number of trains per day. This is a vast development. You've seen the pictures. You've seen the investment that's going to be involved. This thing's going to be running 24 hours, seven days a week. So how many trains a day? Just four. <laughs> just four. And if it's above four, then you're in the rat hole, you're in the Infrastructure Planning Commission. So um, I went back to um, Mr Humphrey on this and got the information and of course the proposal here is way, way in excess of 60 hectares and the current assessment is that it's going to have at least 12 trains a day. In other words, we're going to be having one every two hours through the night and the day. So, we are firmly in the trap of the Infrastructure Planning Commission. Then I went to the Secretary of State and I said, when is the Infrastructure Planning Commission going to be set up and running? And uh, the Secretary of State, John Denham, replied to me as follows, we expect the IPC to be legally established in October, and they're sticking to that timetable, and ready to receive applications by April 2010. April 2010. So this appalling new system is coming round the corner very quickly indeed. And then my last question, is this planning out?